the meeting will come to order. This is Adventures Abridged. My name is Zach. The story you're about to hear was created almost entirely by improvisation during a Dungeons & Dragons campaign over the course of two years, and at the time of this recording, that same adventure is still taking place. You don't need to know anything about D&D to be able to enjoy this story. But if you want to see the gameplay where it was developed in real time, you can find all of our sessions on YouTube and in podcast form via the links in the description. The Nobodies, Chapter 3. The smell of rot was heavy in the thick island air. Nightfall had cooled the streets of Evercrest, but not nearly enough to prevent the onset of decay. Pierce, Kess, Q, and Augustus lurched from shadow to shadow, all the way from the shoreline to the north docks and to the palace gates. The city, proud and safe as it had seemed only hours before, was now fraught with unspeakable violence. Families with destroyed homes and nowhere else to hide sought shelter underneath the dead. For some, the call of chaos had shirked any sense of morality they'd once felt. The wave had crumbled Evercrest. Now, hearts of evil set fire to the debris. As they trekked, Pierce felt a thread tugging on the innermost fabric of his mind. He heard the voice of Steph Kopal. New information. King trapped in throne room. Armed guards. Enter by the eastern tower. Ladder hidden. From empty bedchamber follow the queen's gaze. Move quietly. Strike swiftly. Ugh, hated that, said Pierce. He didn't care for the voices of most people in his ears, let alone in his head. When they reached the palace, the travelers saw four marauders posted atop the entry archway. They dove into a bush at the southeastern corner of the palace, some more gracefully than others. The palace itself was a collection of stone towers. The grounds, typically well-kept, were now washed out and filled with puddles, broken statues, and snapped trees. We probably should have figured out a plan before now, said Augustus. Crab lady over there could just scuttle at him and scare him all away. That's not how any of that works, said Kess. So what, do we just walk up and ask if they've heard the good news about their lord and savior? Which one? Stop, just stop. Stop talking, commanded Kess. I have a thing. With a deep breath, Kess grabbed the vial of ash that hung around her neck. She muttered under her breath, held her forefinger and thumb together, and flicked her wrist downward in a fluid motion. As if borrowing from the dark of night, a cloak of shadow and mist wrapped around each of them, rendering the group virtually invisible. Well, damn it if you aren't just full of tricks. Kess blushed. My brothers taught me. Following a brief search of the grounds, Augustus discovered a ladder embedded in the stone of one of the towers, hidden by illusory magic. With guards still pacing the watchtowers and archways, the four of them ascended the hidden ladder, passing without a trace. Once inside, they found themselves in a pristine bedchamber. Bronze sconces held candles that had never been lit, and a thin layer of dust had settled on every surface. Pierce wasted no time opening every drawer that he could reach. Seriously? Kess asked. Yep, not much to see though. This might be something. He pulled a letter from the drawer and read it aloud. Tam, try to have patience with your mother. If she's as ill as you say she is, it's no wonder she's not entirely herself. I'll be back from Alderaan soon enough. Until then, be kind to her and to yourself. For your sake, I hope you don't miss me as badly as I miss you. That's fucking sweet, Pierce editorialized. Love, Steph. As he finished reading, and before they could hide, footsteps approached from the other side of the bedchamber door. A short human shoved the door open. Upon seeing the travelers, he hoisted a heavy crossbow at the ready. Hey, buddy, Kess said, hiding her panic behind a friendly tone and casting a spell as she did so. 
The marauder smiled and dropped his crossbow, triggering it to fire. The bolt shot into the wall and shattered into splinters. Oh, hey, holy shit, I've missed you, the man said. Ah, uh, me, me, me too, said Kess. You know this guy? Pierce demanded. Mm-hmm, said Kess. Listen, um, can, can I call you Brett? Sure. I mean, my name is Algernon, but I love Brett, too. Brett, um, who, who are all of these people inside the palace? Brett perked up. The children of smoke. Well, that's what we were told to say if anyone asked. I've never actually met any of these people before in my life. Isn't that weird? I'm not usually into this bandity, maraudery stuff like this, but they offered me so much money, and I have like 11 kids or, or 12. I don't know. Who's counting? Your wife, I bet. But who hired you, friend? Augustus asked. Beats me. They sent me a sack of gold and a letter. I never met anybody. And this children of smoke? I don't know. Probably a cover-up if I had to guess. Hey, do you guys like pudding? Kess spoke up. Brett, I, I, I could really use your help. Someone is trying to find me. What? I know, it, it, it sucks. Can you maybe get a few or, or all of your friends to, to go outside and help keep watch so I can stay safe in here? Tears welled in Brett slash Algernon's eyes. He stood, fetched his crossbow, and saluted Kess. It will be my honor to die for you all. Oh, please, please don't do that, said Kess. Listen up, motherfuckers, he shouted from the hall. My friend is in trouble. Everybody to the castle gates. Get your head out of your ass or I'll break my foot off in it. Hop to, hop to. And just like that, with the footfalls of two dozen marching boots, the castle was cleared of anyone who may have been hostile toward those seeking to rescue the king. Needless to say, none of them had ever been inside the castle before. They all gasped in chorus with one another at an intricate statue of the late, great Queen Valrite, Tamron's mother, riding into battle on horseback with her plain-touched angel wings unfurled. Following Steph's instructions, they continued along the statue's gaze to a door with a descending spiral staircase. At the end of a long corridor, one sleeping marauder hadn't quite gotten the order from Brett to guard the castle. He slumped, snoring on a wooden stool with an empty bottle at his feet. The drunken guard snored and stirred ever so slightly. Entirely unaware as a large turtle, a small lizard, an angry man, and a nervous changeling snuck right past him. As the door swung open, the first thing the group saw was an ornately carved throne, made of wood and inlaid with pearl. The room was much smaller than any of them had imagined, as was the throne itself. The floor was carpeted and still soaked through from the flood. An older gnomish woman bound and gagged, sat on her knees with tears streaming down her face in a puddle of seawater beside the unmoving body of King Tamar and Valrite. <coughs> the gnome cried. Pierce cut her binds and removed her gag. Not wasting time, Kess held out the small diamond earrings she and Augustus had found in the vault. Will these do? she asked. They must, the gnome said. Her face was swollen, and her eyes were so bloodshot that they had no discernible whites whatsoever. She snagged one of the earrings and pried the jewel from its setting as she crawled back to the king's body. She knelt beside him, placed the diamond on his chest, and threw her head back in prayer. The sole candle in the room flickered. The gnome priest's voice became a choir unto itself as she pleaded with her deity. Her voices became a single echo that thinned until there were no words at all, only a high, resonant frequency. Kess's neck covered instantly in goose flesh. She could think of this shriek as nothing other than the sound of an unbound soul. The diamond rose from the king's chest, wobbling and vibrating as if riding on the waves of the echo. It glowed brighter and brighter 
and then shattered into a fine dust that floated above the king's face before slowly coiling and drifting into his nostrils. This concludes Chapter 4 of The Nobodies. This is a production of Adventures Unabridged. The ongoing story of The Nobodies can be found via links in the description. Thank you for listening. Meeting adjourned.